Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Terrace Talk FA Cup edition. Fourth round, no city travelling to Oakwell this weekend to face Barnsley, an all championship clash. I don't know what it is about the uh, FA Cup, but every week you look at the fixture list and you get excited when you see Barnsley or Reading or whatever. And if you've placed them in the FA Cup, it feels a little bit of a of a non-event. But uh, ne- nevertheless, we will talk about it. Of course, and um, there is the potential of a, a, a big round five tie for either side, um, providing Chelsea can get past Luton, but we'll touch upon that um, in a little while. Delighted to be joined by Ben, Norwich City fan, and Andy, uh, Barnsley fan, and part of the Red All Over podcast. Gents, thank you so much for joining me. Ben, um, let's let's start with you. Let's talk about the FA Cup first and foremost. How much of, I guess, how special is it to you? Because we hear about the, the magic of the FA Cup. For you, is that something that, that still exists? Do you still relish um, the, the FA Cup and Norwich being in the FA Cup, even though maybe despite last year, they don't have the best record in it, um, certainly in recent times? I mean, I think, first of all, a- any game special at the moment. Uh, I think all of us football fans are sort of living for the football, <laughs> living game to game. Uh, there's nothing quite like the uh, the emptiness of a Sunday, realising you have to wait until Wednesday for the next game. So I guess that, uh, you know, I feel bad for the Premier League fans at the moment who have to wait a whole week for another game. Um, so any any game special at the moment, any game you want to win. Um, but yeah, like, be nice to have a cup run. I think that uh, rather than thinking of it as being magical, I think you look at it as a more practical thing with our squad. We sort of need a cup run to keep all of our squad happy. We've got so many players that aren't getting a game at the moment. I think you we've got... Uh, there's not much to complain about as a Norwich fan at the moment, but there are still some debates around. There's the debate around the number 10 position. There's sort of debate around who's going to be the long-term left back, uh, where Sorensen's best position is probably up to for debate now. And, and the FA Cup gives an opportunity to sort of look at those those sorts of issues. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what the lineup's going to be, to be honest. I, I can't I can't think what the lineup's going to be. It's going to be really interesting to to see to see who's playing where and 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 you know what what Farker does. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice to have a cup run. We you know we celebrate getting to a semi final uh, <laughs> Norwich. <laughs> so you know uh, it, when you look at the size of our squad, you look at the type of teams that some of the bigger Premier League teams put out. I don't think there's many teams for us to 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 fear, and I think we've got a fairly good chance of of putting a little run together. I would say. Mm, we'll we'll come back to those various um, sort of subplots that you've sort of touched upon there. But in terms of actually having a run, it's it's interesting because it's you kind of hear managers that maybe at the top end of the table saying, "Well, um, the focus is on the league and whatnot," and, and at the bottom end, I remember Gareth Ainsworth came out before round three and said how much they'd love a cup run. So it kind of feels like maybe how you view the cup depends on your league position. Is it beneficial for Norwich City? Is it an added bonus to have a cup run at the moment? Or for you as a supporter, should the focus be on ensuring promotion from the championship? Well, I mean, I think from from what I'm saying about, you know, really everything's about the league, isn't it? Everything's about the league. If someone said to me, I remember I remember last year towards the end of the season, people were starting to say, would you take a, a cup win and a relegation? If you could win the FA Cup, would you do that? And, and go down. And at the time, things were so awful in the league <laughs> that you probably would have said yes. But um, I think, you know, over an entire season, you know, being judged in the league, that's a real sort of benchmark of where your team is and how good your team is. And to achieve something over the long, hard slog of a season, it seems nothing can really re- replace uh, sort of the feeling that you get from that and the reward. Uh, from watching your team do well in the league and you know most of the things I'm talking about about you know the opportunities that we have through this cup game come back to the league really you know (laughs) there's there's no way around it like you know if we manage to find a a, someone to to play the positions where we have certain questions it's essentially because we want to do well in the league um obviously i want to do well in the cup i watch every norwich game even even when we'd got to the point we knew we were down last season i was still watching every miserable game uh, and wanting to win every game so obviously we we you know we we still got a lot invested in every match but you know it's the league is the priority no doubt yeah, I agree. I think it is an added bonus and like you say, an opportunity for players and we'll come on to that in a little while. Um, Andy, from from Barnsley's perspective, how important is is the Cup this season? Obviously, going fairly well under Valerie and Ishmael at the moment. 
there's been some mention of the of the playoffs, maybe uh, sort of a varying strengths. I, I know you, you'll be quite keen to dismiss that, but in terms of the FA Cup, how much importance to to you as a football club and as a fan of Barnsley put onto it, or are you the same as kind of Norwich fans that actually it's it's an opportunity to give players um, a little bit of game time, maybe with with a look at the league. Well, it's a it's, it's a it's a fun, it's a funny thing, really. That um, we we pre- previewed this match a few days ago on our Red All Over show, and th- there were a bit of a split between the two young ones that's on it, the presenter Joe uh, and, and a regular contributor Josh, with, uh, with, with the two um, well Statter and Waldorf, if you like, the two old ones between me and Alan Smith. Me and Alan Smith love the cup, love the FA Cup. Josh, Josh for one, he's a young one. What does he know? Josh was saying, "Oh no, leave leave the cup. I couldn't care less." Well, he's wrong. It's it's very simple. It's very simple, Connor. He's wrong. We we want to do we want to do well in all competitions. You know, us getting promotion to to the Premier League is it, it ain't going. That's not going to happen. Playoffs, not not so much. We've not done well these last few matches. You know, we, we we've not we've not won the last in the last three league matches. Although we did beat Tranmere Tranmere in the cup. I, I I would like us to go on and then play, to you know to, to beat yourselves and then and face the mighty Luton. That's what I'd like to see. <laughs> um, I, I think you. I think Norwich. I think I, I. I think Farker needs to do the right thing. You need to concentrate on the league. Pour out, pour out young players, and I'm thinking under twelves. Pour out some very <laughs> young players, um, and give us half a flipping chance because you know we, we are trying to sort of suck up to you at all. You, you were clearly for for me. You were clearly the best side in the league when when you beat us um, a number of weeks ago. C- clearly the best side. I mean, I. And I know it was only one nil, and I know we could have equalised with a last gasp um, slide at the far post. But in truth, you know, you, you could have scored a number, a number more. It was a really good game to watch. Um, but but you were the best. You need you need to give us half a chance. It's not it, it, it's it's not fair. Rest so Countwell. Don't play Countwell wherever you do. Rest him because I don't know what he's like the rest of the matches. You know, I've only seen it on the on the uh, on the you know the, the highlights. But he, he he looked against he looks some player against us and Hanley at the back he's one he's a brute he's one big lad him um, so you know give him a rest and you know give us half you know, give us a chance we'll take it if you give us a chance you know we'll we'll, we'll take it and we'll thank you for it so <laughs> you know, do do a bit you know t- tell him I don't know if I don't know if Farker watches this but you know do the decent thing you know is your mate you know Ishmael's your mate do the decent thing give us a chance um, if you don't. Get ready, because we'll not be happy. And uh, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? It's a talk. Well, you know, with fifteen thousand, oh, it's not fifteen thousand fans crying. As well. I'll be on my armchair and I'll kick every ball. I'll head every header. I'll make every substitution. I'll take every chance, and we'll beat. We'll beat you ten nil if I if I were playing on my sofa. But you know, <laughs> who knows? Come on, come on, the mighty, <laughs> come on, the mighty Luton. That's who I want to play. But you know. We have yeah. to get over a little, you know, just get over you first, that's all, you know. You just need to udge to one side and let us in. Well, I was, 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 was going to say to, to Andy there, how, how seriously should Barnsley take the FA Cup? But given your, your answer there, I think the it has to be full strength and, and, and gun-ho, right? I, I don't think... I, we certainly did against Tranmere. Uh, and in fairness, I, I thought we were much better than Tranmere, but that, that, that shouldn't be a surprise. Tranmere gave us a good game. They defended well. Um, but we put out a strong side, you know. I think there are only a couple of changes, um, so it, it was a very strong side. We, oh, I, I have absolutely no doubt that we'll be taking it seriously. We're lacking firepower at the minute up front. We're not. We're not. We've not scored goals in these last few matches, so it is a bit. It is a bit of a worry. Well, yeah, we'll be taking it seriously. Hmm. Absolutely, it should be an interesting one. And Ben, on that point, Daniel Farker, we know since he joined the club and, and German coaches generally tend to take. Comp- Cup competitions very well, fairly seriously, and we know he did that in in the last round against Coventry. Some changes, but not eleven changes. Do you kind of see that being the way that Norwich go again tomorrow? Maybe some changes, but not a completely fresh eleven traveling to Oakwell. Well, I think this is the most exciting thing about about the game for us is is seeing how he lines up. I know that um, what Andy was saying about uh, you know Barnsley only made three changes for their for their game against Tranmere. So against us, you would expect them to come out strong. So uh, and and you know, it was only one nil, like like Andy said. I, th- I think if if we played a completely new eleven and uh, 
Barnsley played a, a strong team, I, th I think we could be in a bit of trouble, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I don't think we'll go, I don't think we should go crazy. But when you look at the lineup last time, I don't know, you know, is don't know if Mumba's sort of fit again. Uh, you know, is is it time for Sorensen to have a dip out of the team? We played McLean last time and now he seems to be sort of our first choice in central midfield. So you'd say maybe he needs a rest. So I think it could be completely different to the last round because a lot of the players from the last round are, are now playing uh, in in the starting 11 like like McLean and, and or, or out injured. So it's it's interesting. It's interesting to, to see what they're going to do. I don't know who he's going to play in the number 10. Um, I think Pajeta will come in. I think it's he, he needs he needs a run. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see him play with with Hugel because obviously uh, a bit more width to our team, a bit more balls coming into the box. If you've got Kintia behind him as well, which is possible, it could be a, a crossing onslaught, which is not something we're used to seeing at at Carrow Road. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I think Teti will probably come back in. So it's nice to see see Teddy play um so yeah I think I, I think he'll make some changes I think he'll rest some people but I think it will still look like a pretty strong lineup I, I wouldn't expect for example to see uh who's our who's our young center back that's sort of due a due a uh, game Andrew Omavamadile yeah I wouldn't expect to say see him and Zimmerman playing at center back together do you know what I mean so Zimmerman often has a a bit of a mistake in him despite being you know really really committed but you wouldn't expect to see both of them at center back for example so i would expect to probably see hanley or gibson something like that so i think we'll take it seriously enough i think it will be a strong lineup but as i say i think we have to take it seriously because because history says that barnsley are going to uh, are going to play a fairly strong side i think Mm, absolutely and you, you reference it there there are a couple of or a few injured players I'm thinking Kieran Dow Lucas Rupp etc this game may prove a, a really good opportunity and we spoke at the at the top about maybe a cup run being beneficial for Norwich not necessarily for the achievement side of it or the realism of winning the FA Cup but just to give those players on the fringes or those that are maybe lacking game time or just coming back to full fitness a real opportunity on El Hernandez I'm thinking as well who came on for a few minutes um, uh, the other night, didn't he? But hasn't really featured since he since he came back from a fairly long-term injury. So games like this do help with that. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, it's not it's not just line-up, but shape, really. Because we're, we're basically, we're looking at a situation where when Timu Puki comes back, you know, and you've had Jordan Hugel scoring a few goals, where you've got two players that play in the same position, and then you've got the number 10 role behind that nobody is really doing much in. You know, you look at Branch has had a bit of a run now and he has gone missing in a lot of those games. He seems to have so much more impact when he comes on as a sub. So do you start thinking about, you know, can you get Hugel and Pookie into the team? Because, you know, it, it comes to a point where you're like, if you've got players who are playing well, do you need to make your shape around your best players or do you try and bend your players to the, to the shape that you want to play? And I think a cup game gives an opportunity for an, a bit of an experiment in that sense. I, I wouldn't perhaps expect Pookie to play much of a part in the game, if at all. But still, it's uh, it's an interesting time to to experiment with, with shape and lineup, I guess. Mm. Andy, does, does this game give a good opportunity for Barnsley to maybe find some confidence and find their form again? Like you say, the, the recent games haven't been particularly good in terms of results. Is this a good opportunity for them to get back on track under Ishmael? I'm, I'm sure it would. I mean, sc sc scoring one goal would be, uh, be better than it's been for the last three league matches anyway. Um, so, yeah, yeah, of, of course. I, I have to say that we've, we have played pretty well in, in, in those three matches, to be honest, uh, particularly in the first half. We drop away in the second half. But, but we haven't played poorly, particularly at, at, at Watford in midweek. We played exceptionally well in the first half against Watford. Um, so I, I think, you know, I, I think I think we'll give you a game. Uh, and you never know. They might, you, know I, I, you know, I think Ben's wrong. You know, the most interesting bit for Norwich should be coming to Oakwell. That, that's the most interesting bit, not what team you put out. Um, <laughs> you know, coming, to the mighty, coming to South Yorkshire to the mighty Oakwell, that should be a big thing. What what's very strange? What's very strange for me, Connor, is that well, when I watch it on on the telly, you know, it's, it's usually on I follow, um, I can see my seat, and I think I, I should. I, I'm sat there, um, but I'm not. I'm on my side. It's a it's a very strange sensation this season, um, which uh, 
I, I hope you know. Let, 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 let's hope it all gets resolved safely for everybody pretty soon. But yeah, it it, it would help us to have. We're not going to win the FA Cup. We once a number of years ago got to the semi final, uh, and that was heady. In fact, on the way we beat both Liverpool away, and then at home we beat Chelsea. I'm not sure how we beat Chelsea because they missed umpteen chances. But we beat Chelsea, so history could repeat itself. You know, you could be the, you know, you're top of the league. You could be the new Liverpool. Could beat you, and then uh, play the mighty Chelsea if uh, if Luton don't do them, um, and beat them, and, and march all the way to Wembley that I'll not be able to go to. Which are uh, you know, what, what's the point? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good chance for us, and uh, we'll give you a good. We'll do our best, and we'll give you a good game. We're not. I don't want you to think that you know because. We try to downplay our team, you know, because we get we, we've had lots of stuff over the years about you know teams like Barnsley. You know, yeah. we so many clubs say, "Oh, we should be beating teams like Barnsley." We surprise a number of teams because we can play decent football. So you know, expect a decent game. Just you know, just just leave your shooting boots at, at home. Don't 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 bring them with you. If you don't bring your shooting boots, you, you could be onto a bit of a shock. So you know, brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. Well, as, as as Ben said, I don't think we're expecting Timu Puki to play um, in, in yeah. this one because of a, a side strain, which is quite a unique injury. So that, that might help in terms of the shooting boots point that you mentioned. Um, in, in terms of, I, I want to speak about that, that league game. And, and like you said, that you do play good football. And actually, Barnsley have been one of the, the few sides that have come to Carrow this year and maybe press Norwich in, in a way that, that Barnsley did, which is very high, very entertaining. They're very well structured as well, I thought. Um, in, in terms of, Ishmael and, and, and what he's brought to the club, he kind of revolutionised the season, really. I don't think you, and I'm sure you can correct me off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not sure you guys won a game before he arrived. So how much of a positive impact has, has he had on that group of players? And and, and just talk talk to us about the job he's done so far. I think he's done a very good job. We, 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 we've, we've changed how we pick managers. Um, we've decided, we decided a couple of seasons ago that we wanted to play a certain style of football, which is a high press. Um and getting getting teams faces um and so you know the, both with daniel stendhal who got us promotion to the uh, uh, to the championship before and then struber up to, up to early on this season and and now uh ishmael we, we're playing not a dissimilar system it gets it forward quicker some people are saying that we play a, a vertical style i've absolutely no idea what that means but as as far as pressing, we do press. There's been a couple of times of the last of the last number of matches where we've been getting the ball forward quickly, but a bit too quickly. So it's just sort of lugging it down the uh, down the channels, and uh, and that's not a style that we normally play or that I want to see. I have to say that against um, Watford, we didn't. We played de- we, we played decent football to feet, and when we do that, we look all right. We do press high. Um, and, uh, another feature is that when it starts to drop off, because you know that this. Players are still human beings. They run out, you know. They run out of steam. We do make good use of substitutions. We use a, a lot of substitutes. I think we were the first team. Obviously, it's changed this season because of coronavirus. I think we were the first team to actually make four substitutions all at the same time to get, you know, to get, to get it going. It was. It's very bizarre to watch to see four players coming off and another four players going on all at the same time. But we've used our substitutes quite wisely. Um, but you know, we'll see. It's it's a shame for me. I I, I don't know what you think of him because I, 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 Carlton Morris has, uh, has, has obviously cut ties, so he can't play against yourselves. And in the two cameo roles that he's done in the uh, performances that he's put over the last couple of matches, he's looked a pretty decent lad. I, I, I don't know what what yourselves think about him, but it look it, it looks pretty good to us, pretty direct and a strong lad for us, which we um, which we've been lacking. We've been a bit a bit lightweight, you know, it, up, up front. You know that last bit of the play. Okay in defence, okay in midfield, but lacking a little bit up front. So I'm hoping that he's going to bring something. Obviously not this weekend, but uh, you know in the future to us. Oh. Yeah, well, I know he was very highly rated. Uh, obviously, FA Youth Cup winner at, at Norwich. He was um, compared to Grant Holt quite a lot in in those early days, and injuries kind of. Um, stopped his progression to the first team. He had a really good loan at Shrewsbury um, with Ben Godfrey and he actually got injured in the playoff final. Um, I, I think he probably would have come back to Norwich, maybe trying to get involved in the first team, but that ruled him out for about a year. And then once he did return for the 23s, he got another injury. So that kind of ended his Norwich career, really. Um, so, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on in, in, in the championship with Barnsley for sure. But um, I, I know Norwich fans wish him well. Um, so it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how he adapts. Um, ben, just on the on the goalkeeping situation, obviously Tim Krull returned on 
Wednesday, uh, obviously tested positive for, for COVID. Sounds like he had a, a pretty bad run of it as well. Um, uh, dealing with that, luckily he's over it now. It's good to see him back on Wednesday. Dan Barden has, has been described as No City's Cup goalkeeper by Daniel Farker. Are, are you expecting him to to get another go at Oakwell or would you give Tim Krull this game maybe to build up momentum? Of course, if he, if he does play on Saturday, it will be his 100th appearance for the club as well. Uh, I'd play Barden. Simple as that. I, I I really like him. He he looks sometimes he looks so cool under pressure. He looks like he's going to fall asleep. And that's the only thing that could really uh, count against him. He for his age, his temperament is just unbelievable. He's clearly got all the physical attributes that you need. Uh, and you know, I was I was one of the ones at the beginning of of um of Krull's injury saying, you know, I'd probably have rather have seen Barden in than McGovern. Then, as it happens, McGowan had a really good run and he made some great, great saves, good, really good shot stopper. But I would say, and I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here, I actually think Barden looks cooler with the ball at his feet than even Krull does at times. Uh, and uh, When Krull first came to Norwich, it, I don't think it was his natural game. He hadn't played that type of football a lot for his for his previous teams. And Krull's quite good now with, with the ball at his feet. He's, he's confident. He occasionally will try a Cruyff turn, which will make everyone uh, dig their nails into the sofa at home. But um, but I think Barden looks really... Uh, he, he looks good. He looks good. And my only worry with these sort of young players is, you know, blocking their path to the first team, really. Um, it's the same with Sorensen. You know, if you know, we've just signed a left back, and Sorensen had an amazing game last game, and you know, the worry is he's not going to get anywhere near the midfield in the in the in the near future. So you've brought in this left back. Where does Sorensen now fit into playing at Norwich? And it's the same with Barden. Now that he's had a, a taste of the first team, we need to be giving him some games when we have the opportunity, uh, because I think he's good enough. And uh, you know, if, if he can't play them here, then he needs to he needs to play them elsewhere soonish on on a loan, I would say. But yeah, I, I want to see Barden play on on Saturday. I hope he does. Yeah, I think I'm I'm inclined to agree with you actually. And and you mentioned Jakob Sorensen. I thought he was excellent on on Wednesday. It was it was interesting how Daniel Farker kind of um, spoke him up after the game, which is quite interesting management technique. Given he's he's just signed a left back from Greece as well. Um, but but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I think he'll he'll get another go there tomorrow, won't he? Um, probably unless Xavi Quinty has recovered from from coronavirus. Just on that midfield mix, I know you mentioned the number ten, so I'll ask you a little bit about that. Kieran Dow gradually working his way back to injury. Would you give him the opportunity tomorrow or would you stick with Mario Vrancic, who, although hasn't maybe produced the goals and assists, has, has certainly contributed from that position? I think this is the the big question mark for, for Norwich is, is the number 10 role. We haven't nailed it since uh, last time when we, when we were in the championship, uh, really. Um, and I think that We've given Francic a bit of a run, and I don't think I don't think it's even his best position. I think Francic is better uh, as a sort of metronome in the middle of the park, playing deep. That's when he plays best. But he's a little bit uh, he's not great in the tackle, so uh, we tend not not to to play him there unless we're playing someone who's really going to sit off us. Um, but Francic did so well coming on as a sub at the start of the season he was scoring goals he was setting goals up as soon as you play him in that number 10 role for 90 minutes it just doesn't happen for whatever reason uh kieran dowell has had some injury problems but uh, you know and maybe that's made it difficult for him to fit in but he was probably the signing everyone was most excited about at the beginning of the season he's got good pedigree coming from everton he's done it in the championship before and i think that we expected a lot from him and we expected him to hit the ground running. And for whatever reason that hasn't happened, uh, that might be due to injuries. Um, but I think that, I think that's our only real problem is that, is that position. I would give Kieran Dow a go tomorrow and, you know, I, I really, really want him to do well at this point. I'm not yet convinced by him in a Norwich shirt. I haven't, I haven't really seen him do anything to make me think, yeah, do you know what? That's his position now. And, you know, if, if if we made it to the Premier League next year, you'd still be looking at that position and thinking, Kieran Dow didn't nail it down in the championship, then what's he going to do if he has to make a step up? So he needs to, to really take advantage if he's given a chance in the number 10 tomorrow. Otherwise, for me, it's 
it's a consideration of a change of shape because we don't have a player who's playing well in there and we've got a couple of strikers who who are who are in good form so i think he he will get the chance tomorrow i think and i think he really really does need to take it at this point yeah, I, I would agree. Beyond that sort of second half at, at Reading, um, where where he's pretty good and linked up well with Campbell, I would agree. It's not really quite. It's no. It doesn't feel like his Norwich City career has really got going yet, um, mainly because of injury. So hopefully he, he can produce a, a good performance tomorrow. Andy, I've, um, I've 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 listened to a few Championship podcasts, and um, you, you obviously watched the the highlights on a Saturday. And a tag that that comes up for Barnes is, oh, they're quite fun to watch. Do, do you feel that as a as a fan, or does that make it quite stressful? When maybe I know you've spoke about the the issue in terms of the, the top end of the pitch, but when you're playing quite an open game, and I know Norwich fans experience this, is that quite stressful for a supporter, or, or do you still get the fun element from it? No, no, I get the fun element for it. I, that what what I wouldn't want is to play a defensive game and then just then, then just try and you know catch people on the break. I, I enjoy the style of football that we play. And if it leaves us open, it leaves us open. You know, football is an entertaining business. We want to win. Who oh, don't want to win? But, you know, at the minute, we're, I, th- I think, 10th or 11th, about 10th, I think, um, in the league, which is a decent position for us, a very good position for us currently. Um, because, as, as you know, last year, we, uh, we, we still, well, it was injury time against Brentford away that uh, we managed to... Uh, to save ourselves from relegation, that and that was a t- that that was that's testing. <laughs> now that's the testing time. I mean, it, it's honestly, Conor, it weren't a good look. We we were we scored something like the second minute of added time at, at Brentford, who were you know had to win to go up, uh, and then for the next six minutes because he played so long, so I, for that it's, it weren't a good look. I'm on my sofa shouting, "Blow your whistle!" and that's all I shouted for for six whole minutes. Um, <laughs> So that that's stressful, you know. The, the way we're playing at the minute is stressful. You know, we, we, we've given a few daft goals away with some um, with some mistakes, but nothing like the start of last season. We gave mistakes so at least a couple of goals a game last season. So we're getting better. You know, it's a very very young squad that's getting better. And it's interesting what you said about goalkeepers because I, I think we'll change our goalkeeper. Um, you know, at, at this at this minute, is picking Jack Walton, who's a young goalkeeper for us, at the expense of Brad Collins. Um, Brad Collins certainly played uh, in goal against Tranmere, and I, I personally expect him to play um, on Saturday. Uh, and, and I don't mind. It's the first time for a long while, in, in my personal opinion, that Barnes had two decent goalkeepers at the same time. Usually there's been a very clear number one and somebody that can come in in an emergency but not really been, not really been as good. I really rate Brad Collins. Jack Walton's a good goalkeeper as well, but Brad, I wouldn't have any problem with Brad Collins coming in. Mm. Like, like, like you've said about yours, I, I've always liked Tim Krull, and I hope I hope you rest him. He needs his rest, bless him. So you need to rest him. And Barden, if he's that cool, and I hope he's that cool and that laid back that he actually does fall asleep tomorrow. <laughs> so you know, we're, we're a bit of luck he'll actually will, and um, and gives a go by just you know dropping, you know, have a rest, lad. You know, but close your eyes for a minute, it'll not hurt. Um, but we'll see. We'll, I, we'll say we will make a few changes. There's a few players you need to watch for that, uh, you know, you'll not have it all your own way, particularly early on. So, you know, strap yourselves in. It'll be a good game. Yeah, I think we we saw that at Carrow Road. It's certainly been one of the more enjoyable games that, that I've watched this season at, um, at, at Carrow Road. It kind of feels a lot of the time like teams come, sit back, and it's up to Norwich to break them down. With Barnsley, it felt very, very different. And you, you referenced the players there to watch out for. If you had to pinpoint one for Norwich fans to keep an eye on tomorrow, to be aware of, who would you say? Oh, there'd be a few. The two wing-backs, uh, Callum Britton on the right, he's... Uh, He's a, he's come from uh, you know from lower leagues and he's a he's, he's a he's, he's been a good find for us this season. At left wing back, we've got what people refer to as the Burry Baggio. We've got uh, Callum Styles, who's only a young lad himself. Uh, he's normally a central midfield player, and you know that the, there's a big body of opinion in Barnsley that he should be playing in central midfield because you know he can affect more there. But he's made probably the he's one of the players that's made the most tackles in the division, uh, and and he's. He really, he's going to go one day. He will leave us for really big money. Um, he's a he's a player and a half, Callum Styles. When he's on his game, he's unstoppable. He's one of those players, and you don't see it very often. I, I, I would say, I'm not saying he's like David Beckham, but the sort of thing that David Beckham used to be able to do. Not incredibly quick, 
But when he gets the ball, somehow, and you don't really understand how, it creates space for himself to be able to look up uh, and find a player. You know, even when there's other players around Callum, he seems to get the ball and be able to create himself some space so that he's got time on the ball to think. Alex Mowat in midfield, if he's on his game, he's got a good shot and he can dictate play from, you know, from the central midfield. And obviously up front, we've got uh, Corley Woodrow. If you give Corley Woodrow a chance, he'll score. So, mm. so there, there are a few players to watch for. I'll, I'll not taste some of the others because I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want you to get too worried about who you're facing. So. <laughs> you've got, you've got to keep some of it under wraps, haven't you? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, ben, let's, let's, wraps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ben, let's let's get your view. How, how do you see this game going tomorrow? And then, of course, finally, I'll ask you for the dreaded score prediction. <laughs> I think that um, it all depends what sort of team we put out, and uh, I think that. I would hope that we get a bit of a sprinkling of uh, youth in there and of some players that haven't been playing much. Um, the only thing that I would say we need to improve on our team a little bit, and I haven't really heard it said, so it might just be me. When you look at the way that we're playing at the moment compared to uh, how we played two years ago, there isn't the same sort of, it might be because the fans aren't there, there isn't the same level of joy and enjoyment on our players. They seem to get more frustrated. They seem to be playing with a scowl on their face instead of a smile. So what would be nice to see is pressures off because it's not a league game, bring in some younger players, some players that haven't been playing for a while and and just play some expansive football and that, that we can all enjoy and see see them enjoy it as well with the with the pressure of the league uh, at the back of their mind. That, that would be my hope. Um, but yeah, I could see us. Uh, I, I think it will be a narrow win for us, is what I would expect. Uh, sort of a one-goal win, which is what what we've come to to do most games th- this season. So maybe a two-one, something like that. Two-one, interesting. Andy, how do you see it going from a Barnsley perspective? And let's ask for your school, school prediction as well. Well, on our show, we've got uh, Al- Alan Smith, who um, usually is the one that comes out with all the stats. Now, he did it. He did it a number of weeks ago. I, I, I was fortunate to, to, enough to appear on Nottingham Forest podcast, and he gave me a stat for that, and was wrong. He got it wrong. He lied to me. Well, he was mistaken. Let's not say he lied because that's it's an ugly word. No, he lied. Um, <laughs> he told me, and I've asked it, and I've said check it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come on on your show and tell you something that's not true because it's wrong. It's just wrong. So he's assured me this is right that we played Norwich three times in the FA Cup. There were a replay in those three in those three ties, and we've not beaten you at all in those three three separate ties that we've played against you. So I think we do for one. I, I think your goalkeeper will go to sleep for for one of the goals. <laughs> they'll uh, you know they'll lean up against the post and, and nod off, um, and, and and we'll absolutely get ready because we're going to absolutely thrash you. We're going <laughs> you play inside. We'll absolutely thrash you to one. <laughs> a 2-1 two, a two thrashing, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I look forward to it. Uh, ben, Andy, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, really, really enjoyed that. You can, uh, we'll leave links to the to the guys down below and, and check out the Red All Over podcast that Andy's involved with. They're, uh, they're doing some good stuff over there. Jens, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you stay safe. We'll see you again very, very soon. 